Due to the boxy nature of the web, sections or rather breaks between sections often look dull, uninteresting and well flat. Something like this. But what if there's a way to spruce up those flat lines? There is a library called Dynamo Waves that allows you to do just that, turn your designs, your boxy designs into something like this. In this video, I'll show you exactly how it works. All right, Dynamo Waves is a JavaScript library created by Mark Webley. You can install it with a simple script tag, as you see right here, and you use it by including into your HTML a custom HTML element called Dynamo Wave. What it does is, at the time of page load, it replaces those elements with the SVGs or randomly generated SVGs that look something like this. So let's see how exactly this works. I have a demo here on CodePen and you're gonna find links to CodePen demo and to Dynamo Waves in the description, so check them out. I have already added the library, it's available right here in settings, then JavaScript right here and it's ready to use. First thing that we wanna do is we will add a wave to our header right here. And to do that, we will add a custom HTML element Dynamo Wave right here at the bottom of our header element, Dynamo Wave. And we should already see it right here. There it is, it's already generated. Now it's not styled as it should be, it's not positioned as it should be, and it's not in the right color, but we're gonna work on that next. So let's see how we can style it in the documentation. And right here, as you can see, you can style it with the style tag, or you can add a class to it, like this, or even ID, and it's gonna inherit all the properties that you write in your CSS. And a specific property that you will need to use is the fill property, because this one is going to apply color to the SVG that is being generated. Okay, so let's jump back to our demo here. And we're gonna add a class to our Dynamo Wave. We will simply call it Wave. Now let's switch to CSS, or rather SCSS. And we will add Wave class right here. And we will position our Wave exactly at the bottom of our header, so it stretches the full width of the page. We'll position it absolutely. The top is going to be 100%, because we want to push it all the way down to the end of the element. And left is going to be zero. Now this is already in the right place, but it's facing the wrong direction. And if we look at the documentation, you're gonna see that we can change the direction of the wave using the data wave face attribute. And as you can see, wave can face any direction, top, bottom, right, or left. So in our example, we want it to face bottom. We're gonna add this attribute right here, data wave face, it's gonna equal bottom. And let's see how this looks. Right, now wave is facing the right direction, it's still not the right color, and I think it's a little bit too big, so we're gonna tweak the size first. Let's make it explicitly 100% width, and height is going to be maybe one or two rems. Maybe that's not enough, maybe let's try three. And we wanna make sure that our wave is the correct color, and as I mentioned, we're gonna use fill property to add a color. Now the thing to note here is that fill can only take a solid color, you cannot use linear gradient as we're using right here, so whenever you're adding Dynamo Wave, make sure to add a solid color to the element that you're gonna extend, or alternatively, position the gradient so that the solid color goes all along the edge that you wanna extend, like right here. So actually we're using gradient to bottom right here, as you can see. So this is going to be a solid color and the color we want to use for our wave is going to be this one. And I'm just gonna extend the wave right here. I'm gonna nest it and say fill with the color we've already copied. And as you can see, this works pretty well. And we're gonna tweak padding here because we wanna reduce padding right here because we already have this additional SVG that takes more space compared to our top padding here. So let's try it. Padding zero. And our design already looks a little bit nicer, a little bit more interesting. Now let's apply the same logic to our footer right here. And for this example, we're gonna add the wave over our footer right here. So we want it to be yellow. So let's switch back to our HTML. Let's copy this entire element. And we will paste it at the bottom of our wrapper. And it's already looking okay. We just need to set the color. And again, we're gonna set the color in CSS. And we're just gonna nest the wave class into our wrapper to have those colors that are related nearby. If we ever wanna tweak this color, we can immediately see that this one needs to be tweaked as well. So let's see if it works. And sure enough, it works. We already have this really interesting effect for our header and for our footer. And the beautiful thing about this is that those waves are dynamic and random. So every time you refresh the page, so let's try doing that, 
we're going to have a different kind of a curve right here. And there's another option you can use for dynamo waves. It's called wave observation. And effectively what this does is if you include data wave observe attribute and set it to true, it's going to set the intersection observer. And every time the element leaves the viewport, it's going to re-render that SVG that you used. So as the visitor scrolls up and down on the page, they're going to see different kinds of waves every time an element leaves and re-enters the viewport. Let's see how this works. We're going to add this attribute right here. Data wave observe equals true. And now this should re-render our bottom wave. Let's see, now it looks like this. And if I scroll it out of the viewport and back in, now it looks a little bit differently. One thing I noticed about this data wave observe attribute is that it actually introduces an additional anchor link into the HTML. I don't know why this happens, if this is a bug, just something to note if you're gonna use that dynamic property. And I'm gonna show you right here in the developer tools how it actually looks. Let's select our SVG right here. And you're gonna see that this anchor link appears right here. I don't know if it's necessary or not, if it's a bug or not, but hopefully this is going to be fixed or improved in the next release of the library. All right, let's close our developer tools here. And lastly, we also want to include waves around our images right here. So those sections look a little bit more interesting as well. And this is again, example from the documentation right here at the end of the documentation, where they show you how interesting this effect can actually be. And for this example, we want to extend our content right here to go over the image. So we can do this if we add dynamo wave to our hero content element, this is going to be right here. After the headline, we're going to add another dynamo wave. And for this example, we actually want it to face left. So let's immediately tweak this. And we will also add a different class, let's call it wave hero because we want to style it a little bit differently. Let's switch to CSS. And I see this is already generated, but it's definitely not looking as it should. So let's create another wave class. Actually, let's copy this one. And we're just going to tweak it with the wave hero. And we're going to set top to zero and right to 100% because we want to push element from here all the way to this edge right here. So it overlaps our image. And for width, we're going to set three rams. And for height, we're going to set 100%. And this is not visible because image goes above it. So we're going to increase the Z index for this. Let's try five. And all right, this already works. And lastly, we need to set color to this shade of blue right here. And this shade of blue is going to be this one. Again, we have a linear gradient that goes to left. So from here to here, we're going to select the last color we used. Fill is going to be this shade of blue. And this works pretty much okay. Let me save this. Again, this is possible with the gradient because we have a solid color along the edge we want to use. For example, if we were to set this gradient to, to bottom, now you will see that this doesn't look right because this gradient is not really perfectly aligned with our generated SVG. So let's return this to to left. And now we also need to include into our HTML dynamo wave elements for our other hero content elements. One is going to be here. And another one is going to be here. All right, now this looks very interesting. Again, if we reload the page, this is going to be re-rendered. It's going to look a little bit differently than before. And we have really spruced up our design. It looks really interesting with those dynamic, interesting fluid lines that we introduced. And basically, we just included a simple library that's five kilobytes big with a few lines of HTML and CSS. So you can add a Dynamo Waves library to your design toolset if you ever want to make your section breaks, your images or anything like that more interesting, a little bit more fluid and dynamic. Thank you so much for your attention. My name is Oran Yambra. I will see and hear you in the next video, dynamically generated, of course.